caffeine is one of the most popular psychostimulants consumed worldwide. Psychostimulants are substances that alter the mood and behavior of a person. Caffeine raises the levels of the happy hormone, dopamine in your brain. This is what is responsible for the feel-good factor that you experience when you drink a cup of coffee or tea. When you consume caffeine, it enters the bloodstream after it passes through your mouth, throat, and stomach. It takes just a few minutes for the caffeine to be fully absorbed by the body. After 30 minutes of consumption, caffeine levels reach their peak in the body. The breakdown of caffeine occurs in the liver and is aided by certain enzymes. Half-life is the amount of time it takes for a quantity of a substance to be reduced to half the original amount. So if you've consumed 10 mg of caffeine, after 5 hours, you'll still have 5 mg of caffeine in your body. The half-life of caffeine can vary depending on certain genetic and non-genetic factors. Apart from the tolerance developed to caffeine, factors like genetics, age, lifestyle, and diet affect the rate of metabolism of caffeine. Metabolism is the process by which large and complex things like food molecules in medicines are broken down into smaller components to produce energy, build or repair body tissue, produce hormones, among other things. Certain liver diseases like cirrhosis, hepatitis B, or hepatitis C have been associated with lowered clearance rates of caffeine. A study was conducted to analyze caffeine elimination in people with cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is a chronic liver condition, where healthy liver tissue is replaced with scar tissue, damaging the liver permanently. The study revealed that the half-life of caffeine in controls was around 5.2 hours, while in people with cirrhosis, it was prolonged to 6.1 hours. Pregnancy also slows down caffeine metabolism. The CYP enzymes or the cytochrome P450 enzymes are responsible for more than 90% of caffeine clearance. The CYP1A2 gene produces the enzyme responsible for caffeine metabolism. The relationship between the CYP1A2 gene and caffeine is a two-way street. The gene affects how you metabolize caffeine. At the same time, your caffeine consumption habit influences the activity of this gene. A study suggested that the daily consumption of at least three cups of coffee increased CYP1A2 activity. CYP1A2 star 1A and CYP1A2 star 1F are two main forms of the CYP1A2 gene that affect caffeine metabolism. The CYP1A2 star 1A form is associated with rapid caffeine metabolism, whereas the CYP1A2 star 1F form is associated with slow caffeine metabolism. The genes responsible for caffeine breakdown also affect your response to certain drugs. For example, people who tend to break down caffeine faster also tend to be more resistant to certain drug therapies of schizophrenia. Analyzing your CYP1A2 gene can not only provide personalized insights on healthy caffeine consumption, but also help with choosing the right dosage for certain drugs. A simple genetic test can help you with this. Most genetic tests provide your DNA information in the form of a text file called the raw DNA data. This data may seem like Greek and Latin to you. We, at Xcode Life, can help you interpret this data. All you have to do is upload your raw data and order a gene nutrition report. Xcode Life then analyzes your raw data in detail to provide you with comprehensive nutrition analysis, including information on your CYP1A2 gene. If you are interested in the pharmaceutical aspect of the CYP1A2 gene, you can check out the personalized medicine report as well.